The back and forth between Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited and the Dangote Petroleum Refinery is yet to fizzle out. President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Joe Ajerio, has attributed the current uproar between the NNPCL and Dangote Refinery to alleged government policy somersault and fraudulent moves by some forces. Ajerio, who said this to journalists at the Motala Mohammed Airport Terminal 2 in Lagos on Wednesday, queried the basis for re regulating what Dangote is to sell, insisting that deciding for the private sector on how or what should be sold is an act of fraud. However, some Nigerian critics continue to insist that Dangote Refinery should let the public see their price tags going forward. Joining us now is Majid Dahiru, a news columnist. Good morning, uh, Mr. Dahiru, and welcome to The Morning Show. Majid, <clears throat> thank you very much for having me. Well, can morning. we Good have morning. your take on current the developments? Government. Yes, yes. On current developments, you know, in the uh, oil and gas sector, particularly the downstream. I know you say that government should provide subsidy for the people. You are a subsidy uh, person. There are some other persons, neoliberal economists, who insist that, look, market forces uh, should come to play. But we also find ourselves in a difficult situation where government says willing buyer, willing seller, and then at the same time, you find NMPC Limited uh, fixing their uh, prices. And NMD PRA, the midstream and downstream regulatory authority, talking from both sides of the mouth. What do you think the problem is? I think the problem largely is policy inconsistency on the part of the federal government. Like you rightly pointed out, for some of us, we believe that you cannot deregulate the energy sector of any country because of the importance of energy to the productive economy of any jurisdiction. And like you rightly pointed out too, I'm a strong advocate of government intervention in pricing because I believe that if you take a cursory look at the entire developed um, hemisphere or what you can call the global north, you will understand that the energy markets are not necessarily guided by market forces and that the invisible hand is usually the government that comes in to regulate, particularly when it comes to issues of pricing, because of the affordability component of energy security. So subsidy becomes a, a useful tool, an economic virtue that is not a vice, that is usually administered to make energy affordable for citizens. However, the Nigerian government, beginning from May 29, 2023, when our president declared subsidy gone, has decided to take a different path. And subsidy has been removed from petrol, and purportedly, the sector has been deregulated completely. So with the coming on stream of Dangote refineries, one would have thought that it would be a willing buyer, willing seller between the promoters of the refinery and marketers in Nigeria, which includes NMPCL uh, trading. But curiously, an arrangement was actually you know, brought forward where NMPCL will be the sole off-taker from, from the refineries, uh, from Dangote's refinery. That is very curious because I do not know what benefit that will be to the Nigerian people. And from the revelation of the pricing template by the NMPCL, it is clear that Nigerians are buying this petroleum product that it is taking delivery of from the Dangote refinery at a premium because uh, not only have we seen an increase in price, we also see a margin in the pricing template which suggests that probably this is not a subsidized product. So the question will now be, why this marriage of inconvenience between the NMPCL and Dangote refineries, which seems to be sitting well with the promoters of Dangote refineries? Beyond the pricing issues and the back and forth of the pricing, is even the much talked about issue of availability. So in addition to the pricing dispute, there's also a dispute about availability from the supply side. Whereas Dangote has disputed the price that was advanced by at the NMPC, it has not come forward with its own price. I mean, somebody has bought products from you. If you claim that the price at which uh, the buyer has made public is what the, the cost of the products are, then you should immediately tell the public what the cost of your product is. At what cost did you sell to the buyer? Since the buyer has made a public claim about his own pricing, that is also not very forthcoming from the Dangote refinery. We also have a bigger problem now of even supply. According to reports, 
in uh, major Nigerian newspapers. It is being suggested that rather than taking delivery of 25 million liters a day as agreed in the uh, arrangement between the NMPCL and the Dangote refineries, there seems to be a shortfall in the last three days of about 64 million liters from the supply side. So all of these issues are worrisome because it means that right now Nigerians are grappling with unaffordability of the product and imminent unavailability because if the shortfall continues in the next coming days, we are likely to see the return of queues and they will be, lo be longer and more agonizing because of the unaffordability component of this whole issue. So I think that the government's inconsistency in the first place of not allowing Dangote to sell to willing buyers as a willing seller that it should be is also confounding. So we do not know the basis for this. So we would have thought that the government has started to deregulate to the extent of removing subsidy from petroleum products would have gone the whole hog and not introduce uh, something that looks like a, a, a somersault to a policy that it has pursued in the last one year. Even some of us are not very comfortable with the policy. Yes, I have a very, very simple question for you. Are you convinced that government is not paying subsidy currently, even with the offtake of uh, fuel or PMS from Dangote refinery? Because when you add it, add the maths, it's not adding up. And so the conversation is that there's still subsidy being paid because Nigerians might not be able to afford the real cost of petrol. And so if you're calling for that full deregulation, then you're asking us to pay the real market value of petrol. Is that what you're pushing for? But let me ask, do you believe that government isn't paying subsidy at all? For me, as a citizen, buying petrol at almost a thousand naira per litre, it doesn't make sense to me for government to claim that it is paying subsidy. If you compare it to other parts of the world, where fuel and is... And so, for me... You know, sometimes when we compare uh, jurisdictional prices, I think we cannot miss out the point. The cost of production in some of those jurisdictions are not the same with what you have in Nigeria. And the, the environment is also not the same. A lot of factors go into uh, those pricing templates. And don't forget that you have a problem at home of a thoroughly, thoroughly disgraced local currency that is performing very badly against major world currency. So if you have that in mind, we may not always use the pricing template of other jurisdictions to compare what you have in Nigeria. I mean, Nobody saw the steep fall in the value of the naira against the dollar coming when it was floated. So that is a factor that is injurious to our own economy and purchasing power parity. So we may not always compare ourselves with the price from other countries because the reality is completely different. So we should, we should stick with what is within affordability threshold. Nigeria is a 30,000 naira minimum wage a month country. And petroleum prices at 1,000 naira, given the importance of petrol mm -hmm. in driving our economy, in driving the logistics of our economy, yeah, is way beyond affordability threshold. But that's a different ball game. I am saying that the government that proposed to have removed subsidy and is hell-bent on deregulating the system should not come up with this. Otherwise, they should state it clearly that the basis for the relationship between the Dangote refinery and the NMPCL is for the purpose of subsidy. Then we can begin to interrogate whether or not that subsidy is useful at this point or otherwise. Yes, Majid, just a very quick intervention uh, from me uh, because of a time constraint. I, I, I like taking energy conversation, uh, oil and gas, within the wider context of energy. And, and I'm still really surprised that whatever volume turnover of petrol we're able to import uh, or to produce locally in Nigeria will still need energy sustainability. And I'm not sure petrol should be our first line of thoughts. And that's not what obtains in developed economies. We're trying to develop an economy in which you have a base load source of energy in which we're, dis we're spending so much time discussing fuel that goes into generators and vehicles. Uh, why are we spending less time discussing where we're going to have the type of energy that would drive industrialization, manufacturing. That is, for me, is one major conversation that we should be having. So how do you think we should go on the both side? For affordability, sustainability, market-based, uh, while we also have energy that we need for basic life and living and to industrialize and empower the country. How do you respond? No, without, without prejudice to the very important point you made about probably energy transition to more sustainable energy sources, 
to drive our industrialization and economic activities. The reality is that as of today, the government has not developed that capacity. It is not consumers like us or citizens like us that have that responsibility to develop such capacities as alternatives to, pay, to, to petrol or hydrocarbon derived energy um, derivatives. As it is today, petrol is the most important energy product in Nigeria. It is the most utilized energy product. And that was why the model of subsidy and the marginal cost increase in the price of petrol sent our economy down, you know, the doldrums, sending inflation to all-time highs, and inflation is the enemy of any economy. So until we have an alternative to petrol, the point I'm making is the energy product we are utilizing today must have availability component to it, accessibility as well as affordability. And affordability entails government intervention in pricing, as it is done all over the world. Whatever energy mix you decide to use anywhere in the world must have government intervention in pricing. It is something we've run away from for so long and has got us into a lot of trouble. However, this government has decided to deregulate, and I'm saying it owes the public a clear explanation as to this arrangement between Dangote and NMPC. That seems not to be working very well. There is so much acrimony. It, it looks like Dangote is seen in NMPCL as a foe rather than a friend. And so we need to understand why we're having this forced marriage of inconvenience in the first place that is about to create petroleum product scarcity because if the reports coming out of the media to the fact that there's a shortfall in supply from the Dangote refineries into the market, then we're in big trouble. In addition to also having increase in prices arising from the pricing templates that the NMPC has issued to the public. So it's a serious issue that we need to contend with. And policymakers on the side of the federal government must make up their mind on what they want for the Nigerian people as it concerns energy, energy uses, accessibility, affordability, affor availability, as well as accessibility. Because an energy insecure country cannot be productive economically, no matter how you look at it. An energy impoverished country is a recipe for mass impoverishment, mass, mass hunger, and the kind of economic crisis you are facing today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Majid Dahiru, uh, for joining us on the morning show.